May I invite Frederick Mulder to address us. So after leaving Oxford, I, I, um, I had a family. Um, and I, I had stopped my practice of tithing when I, I had been a kind of devout Christian. Well, I had been a devout Christian. But I, I, I lost my religious faith. And, um, and I stopped tithing for a while. But when my business was established, I remember once, I can almost remember the moment listening to a radio program. And there was a statistic about the fact that 35,000 children died every day of malnutrition and preventable disease. And here I was, a kind of you know, reasonably successful young person with a young family, and I thought, this isn't right, and what I'm doing isn't going to be enough in this life unless I address some of these huge issues of global inequity. And so from that moment, I started to tithe again. And all my professional life, I've made the practice of, of at least tithing, or when I can, double or triple tithing. If, you know, now that my kids have left home, it's a lot, uh, it's a lot easier to do more. That my interest has always been, um, well, with a mixture of local, but particularly with international development issues and with, um, and with environmental issues. And for me, the. For me, my philanthropy, my giving, has been an immense source of joy. It's what's connected me with the wider issues of the world. I've met many of the most interesting people in my life uh, through my philanthropy. I've met literally hundreds of inspiring people working on good projects. And I've always considered a privilege to be able to help to support them. Because my idea about giving is that there are many things I would like to see done in the world, but I can't do them myself, partly because I'm doing something else that I'm reasonably good at, um, and um, partly because you know, I don't have the time or I don't have those skills. So what better to, than to use the resources you can generate by doing something you love, and I do love what I do, to help someone else who's doing something really important that, that needs to be done. So, that's always been my kind of vision around philanthropy. Um, and, and interestingly enough, having the philanthropy also made the business more interesting. It gave me a reason to get up in the morning, um, quite apart from the fact of supporting my children. Um, it, even when that was kind of taken care of, there was, there was something to push for. And, I also found ways of integrating my business with my philanthropy. And um, I'll tell you just a couple of stories. I remember the first one, I was dealing with a client in the States and trying to sell him a Munk woodcut. And, I, and we were, I think we were $15,000 apart on the price. And I knew that he'd supported some good causes in the States, so I said to him, his name was Phil, Phil, why don't we take the difference and give it away together? So, in other words, I'll only get, you know, the, what you'd offered me, but it'll cost you what I asked you, but, but we'll take that difference and we'll give it away together. And he immediately said, yes, I, I'll do that. And he said, actually, I'll do it better. He said, I'll get tax relief, because he was American on that. <laughs> so I'll give 25000 away. So it kind of was really interesting, because it, it put us both on the same side of the transaction. Um, it, um, it took all the tension away from the transaction. It gave us something to do together instead of it being a kind of zero-sum game, which trans commercial transactions between people often are. And um, so I've done that several times, um, sometimes successfully, sometimes not successfully. Some people really don't, um, really don't want to know. But, um, but where it, when it works, it's, it's a... It's a kind of wonderful thing to be able to do, and I, I recommend it to you if you've ever got a situation um, in which you're, you're grappling with some difference, to, to see if there's something you can do to actually take whatever is the source of the difference, particularly if, if there's a kind of monetary element to it, and see if you can do something with, with that together. Um, another thing I did um, uh, recently was... Um, I had a, a very wealthy client who uh, had 
given lots of money to museums, but hadn't given very much to, um, to social causes. And um, I had done a piece of work for him, and instead of charging him for it, instead of charging him a commission for it, I said to him, look, why don't we, why don't we set up a couple of microfinance institutions? Because I'd been a great supporter of, of microfinance. And um, I knew that for $10,000, which is roughly what, it would have, what, what the fee would have been, we could set up two microfinance banks in, in Latin America. And I said, why don't you do it in honor of your daughters? Because I thought, as long as I'm involving him, I might as well involve the next generation as well. <laughs> so he liked this idea. So he set up two microfinance banks in, um, in Haiti, actually. Um, and um, again, I thought that, and he, he loved the idea. And he's gone on to support a number of other things as well. I could tell you mo lots more stories about, about that. But I want to talk a little bit about collaborative giving, because that's really been one of my great passions, and um, um, I was there at the beginning of the social network. I wasn't the founder of it at all, but I was there at the beginning. Um, it's, a, it's a collaborative giving network, which is still going strong after 25 years. Um, um, and the reason I, I started collaborative giving was early on in my giving, I was actually taken advantage of uh, by a charity. I don't know if any of you have ever had that experience. Lots of people have been worried about having that experience. It's a common excuse for, for not giving because, you know, charities do bad things and, of course, sometimes they do. And this one did. Um, after I'd given it to what were, for me in those days, big grants, um, it um, asked me for a third grant um, and two weeks later went bankrupt. And it was already in significant financial trouble but did it tell me? No. It just, it asked me for the money and uh, a couple of weeks later, belly up. And I thought, you know, if I'd had a peer group to check things out with, this might not have happened to me. So, um, so by a, a kind of concatenation of circumstances, I discovered this group of people who were thinking of setting up a kind of collaborative giving network, which became the Network for Social Change. And, um, and that was wonderful, but in 2002, I decided to set up, with the help of three other people, um, a different kind of network, which had no wealth requirement. It didn't do residential conferences, which the Network for Social Change did. Um, and it introduced people directly to charities. So it was a kind of way of having philanthropy for, for all, um, and, but with a very low barrier to, to entry. Um, in London, our minimum gift is 100 pounds. I think in Bristol, it's 50 pounds. Um, and um, in Toronto, I think it's $100. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm really, I'll tell you in a moment how it, um, how it works. But um, it's, it's been called various things. It's been called a kind of um, dragon's den for charities. It's been called uh, the first UK's first public giving circle. It's been called speed dating for philanthropists. And I guess it is kind of all of those um, things. Um, and um, and I, th I think of it as philanthropy for, for all, because philanthropy is such a big word. And I've kind of wanted to reclaim it for, for, um, for those of us who can't make grants in the millions of pounds. And um, it works like this. We have, um, uh, in London, we have five or six meetings a year. I think Bristol has normally one, normally one. But it's also going in, in Leeds, in Oxford, and in Toronto. And it's going to start in Devon. Devon is having its first meeting. Sorry, Prue, I forgot that. We all have different resources, whether they're financial or emotional or in terms of skills, but we can all do something. And for me, it's been an incredibly rich experience, as I said before, being in this world, emotionally rich and intellectually rich. And um, um, it's made my life, I feel that it's enriched my life far more than it has enriched the charities to, to which I've given.